I wanted to provide a little more clarification around um, what I was talking about in terms of the um, Unicode changes that I'm looking at doing. Um, these are partly in response to some changes um, on the Windows 10 side, um, and partly because of some differences that you're going to see um, between the different operating systems and likely um, users who work um, where their uh, system settings um, are specific to cultural regions. So the way that uh, .NET and works specifically, which is the operating system, uh, the application programming language I use um, in Mark Edit, uh, strings are treated as uh, Unicode um, objects. All strings are treated as Unicode, so all Mark 8 and other data is legacy um, supported, and I do some conversions underneath to make that happen. Um, one of the things that I've noticed um, in the past, uh, all string conversions through um, the application have been done ordinally, and ordinally means that, especially for binary conversions, uh, ordinally means that if you have um, uh, the characters have to be exact. So in the case of what we're seeing here, we have two characters. One is an E with an accent, one is an E with an accent. They look the same, but they're not. If we look at them under a hex editor, we see here uh, this one is multiple bytes. Um, it actually represents, uh, you can see here it's E with the accent, it's actually an E with the accent mark and the operating system knows how to cl collapse them together. It's a decomposed uh, character and so this would be most likely either form D or form KD. Uh, in this case we have um, another E with an accent mark. This is a composed character and so this would be probably the canonical representation. Uh, in previous versions of the application uh, when you would do a search and replace, the tool could find uh, materials using either of these con uh, either of these forms, but replacements would only happen if you use the correct form within your data. And that wasn't so much of a problem in the sense that for the most part, mark data, um, has traditionally used a decomposed notation, and that's partly due to the fact that the Library of Congress um, recommends it as part of the Mark 21 um, Unicode transition that was made years ago. And it was it was mostly to provide a lossless transition between um, UTF-8 and Mark 8. Um, I'm not quite so sure that's still important anymore, um, and so I'm wondering um, if if that that notation, that form, is still as important as it used to be. And, I, and I'm starting to think maybe it's not, partly because in the wild I'm seeing a lot of data files that are coming from ILS systems where the notations, the, 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 the form of the data is actually mixed. You're seeing a mixture of uh, composed and decomposed characters, and that's not a problem from the operating perspective, operating system's point of view. The data renders the same. Where where it really becomes a problem is when you're doing things like passwords, in which case an E with an accent mark. Um, if you were saving that as a, a password, you would want it to actually be the right number of bytes because you're going to compare those in a more of a binary fashion or through a hash. And the difference will make a the difference in character encodings will make a big difference. So um, in Mark Edit, uh, there's always been a way to control character encoding. So I'm going to go ahead and open uh, the current version of the application because I'm going to show you what happens right now. Um, so in the preferences in the Mark Engine, there's always been a place here for supporting um, Unicode normalization. And, to be honest, these probably should be a little more descriptive. The reason why the canonical, uh, the cat compatibility decomposition has always been selected is because it's been the uh, the Mark 21 recommended um, normalization. Uh, although for most international users, and, and honestly most users who use Koha, I tell them to use the canonical D, uh, uh, the canonical notation, and it's partly because of the way that it renders. Um, diacritical values. If you're indexing data, you'd like to index that code point as an, an, an actual um, letter with a diacritic rather than dropping the diacritical value. Um, so already you're seeing systems that uh, for their own internal use um, are, are looking at the canonical notations. 
So this is a way that MarkEdit allows you to, to, to control your, your Unicode uh, normalization. Now this value is only applied when you translate your data to Unicode. So if you um, already have your data in Unicode, um, then the application doesn't check to see um, if your data is in one notation, mixed notations, or what have you. And one of the things that I'm thinking about doing um, is changing that. So based on the values that are set here, um, I'm starting to think that for simplicity's sake and to help alleviate some confusion, because for most catalogers, uh, I still run into way a lot of catalogers that don't realize that when you see a Unicode value like this, you may not actually be seeing the same value. Um, it, it looks the same, it acts the same, um, but under the underneath in the, the bytes, it's not the same. And so there's a lot of confusion when you take a file like this, uh, which has a number of these values on it, and if I do a replacement, um, and I take the bottom one, which is because uh, this is a this file here is in in a canonical notation. I take the bottom one and replace it. I get replacements, and you see that they've been replaced. If I take the top one and I run the same operation, the application says there are modifications, but if you look at the file, there are none. And what's happening is that the um, tools that do the search or the comparison of strings um, uses a uh, string comparison algorithm that's not ordinal. So um, replace is an ordinal function. And so because these two values are ordinar ordinally different, they're culturally the same, but ordinally different, the values don't match and the replacements don't happen. The replacement would happen if I told it I wanted to do the replacement not as a match case, in which case now there's 40 replacements, that's actually 40 values, the 12 or 12 lines, um, but there are actually replacements made. And in this case, the reason why those replacements happen is because now we're no longer doing ordinal replacements, and the values are looking at the um, replacements in a cultural context, and so it can see those various representations. Um, that's all confusing. Most folks don't realize that's what's happening, they don't understand it. They try and do the two searches, it, they, they get a file, maybe the file is in canonical notation, um, you type it on the keyboard or you pull it from your character map, it's going to work. If it's in a, a non-canonical notation and you type it from the keyboard or you pull it from a character map, there's a pretty good chance it may not work. And there's then a lot of confusion as why it doesn't work. Certainly I could go ahead and copy it from the text and use it because uh, then I get the correct notation. Um, but I think that's a piece of confusion that I'm trying to think about how to solve. And there are ways to do it. Um, the, the application, um, and this is, this is kind of the way that C Sharp handles it, by default they transition data into um, the canonical notation when possible uh, if you do, if you leave it up to its own devices, and obviously right now we're not. Um, and then the replacements happen. Now in Windows 10, it's doing some of this in the background. So in Windows 10, this exact same search that we just tried, it works. No change is happening. And I need to take a look and see when it does the replacements, if it's replacing everything um, with the, uh, the correct um, uh, normalization, because I, I'm honestly not sure. It hasn't worked that way in the past. That was a behavior change with the operating system. Uh, and so uh, I need to take a look and see if it's smart enough to know which notation it's working with, because at this point it's not doing an ordinal um, replacement. It's, it's defaulting to a cultural replacement, which is um, less confusing for the user, uh, but potentially problematic, um, assuming that the notations don't change, uh, assuming the notations change, and I need to take a look at that. So um, that's what's part of, partly got me thinking about this. So there are some ways to deal with this. So a couple of them would be to um, look at uh, uh, basically not caring. 
uh, in terms of whether the notations are uh, C or uh, KD or what have you, because the operating system doesn't care. Uh, but the question would be, um, does the uh, ILS systems that we use care? And I'm asking, right now I'm asking the user community, I'm asking vendors specifically. Um, I've talked, I've, I've made a request to OCLC and I've followed up with the Library of Congress, um, partly because I want to know um, in these systems where I'm sure they're seeing mixed notation, mixed um, uh, uh, notation form coming, is it um, having an impact on their systems? Um, the other option would be to extend the functionality um, of the current uh, preferences. So rather than having the application just do normalization when converting from Mark 8 or another encoding to Unicode, the application could always ensure that when data is processed, um, that the notation that's utilized is the normalization that the user specified. Um, and that's actually possible. So I've done some proof of concept work. Um, so in this case, uh, we have uh, the same file. And we can go here and do the replacement. And the way that the application is working um, is internally, and you'll see all the replacements are made. Uh, we go back and we take the other one. All the replacements are made. Uh, the way that this works is that the application takes the data that comes into the system, um, converts the data uh, to the form C notation, and then on output converts the data back to the notation that the users requested. Um, it's not exactly like that. Um, there's some looking that happens to see if the conversion has to happen because maybe you're, um, you've passed the data in in the correct form. Um, but honestly, I'm thinking that even, even there that might not be useful. It may be better to just centralize on a specific canonical notation and on the output translate the data because Again, one of the things that I'm seeing more and more of, um, and, and in fact, this is part of the reason why this issue came up, are files coming out of an ILS system from OCLC, from vendors, where the um, normalization is mixed. And so the encoding characters are utilizing both single and decomposed um, code points. And that's requiring the user right now to, if they want to interact with data um, that has diacritics, using those different notations to actually work with them in those different notations. And that's confusing to everybody. Um, so I'm starting to think about what this looks like. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be making, I won't be making any changes soon. Um, Partly, I need to make sure, one, uh, that this proof of concept doesn't cause an in, a, a significant performance um, hit. Uh, and what I'm doing now um, is writing a number of um, wrappers around the way that the application uh, handles data, pushing it into and out of the, uh, the editing functions so that um, I can just uh, basically flip the switch. Um, and what that also means is that if I end up doing this, um, I'll probably provide an option here to allow users to um, not allow the application to do um, uh, automatic uh, normalizations so that it would work the way that it works now where if you had data in the various um, uh, normalizations you would have to search for and interact with them in the normalization that's found. Um, again, that won't solve your problem if you're getting data from external sources where the normalizations are mixed, which, like I said, is happening a lot now. Um, but it would give you the ability to, especially at times where you may want to know um, if the code points for particular characters exist in multiple cases. Um, but anyways, it's, 
it's an interesting problem um, and one that like I said on the operating system side doesn't exist the operating system most applications they don't care um, if which normalization you use and, and to be honest outside of indexing purposes and passwords there really isn't a reason to care um, unfortunately uh, because the um, Library of Congress's uh, documentation um, for MARC uh, for how you implement Unicode um, in MARC data still um, makes the recommendation slash requirement that for lossless purposes data is decomposed um, I do have to care, we have to care uh, about how this normalization works and so um, given that um, uh, I'm seeing uh, in a lot of newer operating systems a transition underneath um, for Unicode processing to automatically make the transition to canonical notation um, for internal processing. Um, this seems to be something that needs to be addressed and talked about. And so um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be um, in the uh, code libraries working up ways to potentially implement something, though it will be disabled um, for the time being. Uh, in fact, I may allow folks to turn it on um, rather than having it on, um, especially until I start getting some feedback um, from the various vendors um, and OCLC. Um, but I'm also hoping to hear from, from folks um, in the community. That's part of the reason for making this request um, for, for feedback and part of the reason for, for demonstrating what's happening now um, within the application and for users. Um, I'm not, I, I think that, I think that um, having the application uh, essentially allow users to force a standardized normalization is a good thing. Um, I'm not sure it needs to, um, but I also know um, based on feedback that I get um, and, and given the large international community and the folks that do have to deal with diacritics the current situation where um, the, uh, the user has to know which version of a character is utilized um, because in the mark record it's important that that normalization continues to be represented um, is at least for now um, is problematic and something that I'd like to try and solve um, and try and figure out a way to solve it without causing other problems down the road. So anyways this is part of the this is this is the um, the a visualization of the issue that I'm talking about. Um, right now, um, like I said, the way that the application works, if your data is in one normalization or mixed normalizations, it's not going to do anything with them. It won't change your data um, unless you specifically um, force it through the Unicode conversion, uh, in which case it'll use whatever your notation that you've specified is. Um, but uh, I will caveat that with the uh, the 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 caveat that um, I need to do a little more looking in terms of what's happening on the Windows 10 side um, since it is doing um, a number of um, since the it's obviously changed the way that it recognizes uh, replacements um, and I think that that what's happening is that the what's happening is that it's it's probably internally transitioning most data to um, to form C is my guess, uh, although um, I'm going to have to take a closer look at that. Uh, so, anyways, that's that's kind of um, uh, the where where I'm at, and I wanted to provide a little more context here around the question that was asked.